Have you ever been filming a video in OBS and thought to yourself, I really want to move that source object. Well, what if you could just grab it and move it around? Or maybe you don't need it on the screen at all. Or what if you need to do a scene transition and back? Hi, I'm Tyler from RoboFlow, and I'm going to show you how to make an OBS controller. OK, so how does this all work? On the left, we have RoboFlow.js, which is running object detection. And on the right, we have OBS, which has all, all of our scenes and sources. You can see that RoboFlow.js is running object detection, and it recognizes four gestures, up, stop, grab, and down. We can use these gestures to perform certain actions in OBS. So now you have a basic understanding of how object detection can control LBS. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is collect some data. Record yourself doing four gestures. Stop, grab, up, and down. Open up your favorite web browser and go to roboflow.com. If you don't already have an account, sign up. But since I already have an account, I'll just be signing in. Create a new project and call it OBS. Your model is going to be predicting gestures. Object detection is what we're aiming for, so create a public project. With those videos that you just made, this is where you'll be uploading them. We need quite a few frames, so I suggest at least making around 100 frames. Since I've already annotated, I'm just going to make 10. Now that my frames have been extracted, click, click Finish Uploading. After they're uploaded, you can assign it to a teammate. I'm just going to assign it to myself. A job has now been created, and you can now annotate within Ro RoboFlow. Here's where we're going to be labeling our gesture is up. Do this for all of your photos in order to train an accurate model. You also want to make sure that you haven't missed any, like I just did. Otherwise, the model might get confused. Since we're labeling on both hands, the model will be able to detect when both hands are using the up gesture. Now that we've labeled all of the images that we want to label, click Submit for Review. Go into the Review stage and click Approve All. Once all of the images have been approved, you can click Add Approved to the dataset. The normal split is fine. Now that you've added them to the data set, you can generate a version. I don't recommend generating a version until you've annotated all the other data sets. Since my new project didn't have enough annotations, I jumped over to my main OBS project, which has over a thousand annotations of hand gestures. Now that we have enough images in our data set, we can begin the generation phase. Here you'll see how many source images you have, your train and test split, and your pre-processing options. If you want to explore these pre-processing options, we have some more tutorials in our documentation. For now, I'm just going to use the default pre-processing options. I have selected one augmentation, which is the bright brightness augmentation. And we can explore these augmentations now by clicking the Augmentation button. Why I currently have the Brightness augmentation on is because within my scene, uh, there can be a differential of bright and darkness as the sun comes up and down. I've used the Brightness augmentation to help correct for those uh, images uh, and environmental effects. 
Now that you have all of the augmentations and pre-processing steps that you like, generate your version. Once when a version is made, we can start training. I recommend doing accurate training for this use case. You can train from a checkpoint if you've already trained a gesture model. But if you haven't, train from scratch, which will train a new object detection model with new weights. Training from checkpoint is very useful if you already have weights established for a certain use case. But in our case, we haven't trained a model before, so we're just going to train from scratch and click Start Training. Now all of your images are going to be zipped up into a file that can be trained by the machine learning model. You'll be notified at your email address once the training is done. Once your model is done training, you can see training results here. Head over to the Deploy tab to see various ways you can deploy your RoboFlow model. What we need for the OBS controller is your model ID and version number. Write this down or remember it in your head for later. One of the last things we need to run the OBS controller is the publishable key. You can find that by going up to the right hand corner and clicking Settings. Select your appropriate workspace. Since I made my project in Tyler, I will be clicking Tyler. Go to your RoboFlow API section. Here you'll be able to find your publishable API key. Copy that and save it for later. All right. Now we have everything we need from RoboFlow to run the OBS gesture controller. Let's head on over to RoboFlow's GitHub, where we can find the OBS gesture controller code. Once you're here, you can either git clone the repo or download the zip file. I'm going to download the zip file. Once when you've downloaded the zip file, unzip or extract it into a folder of your choice. Once extracted, go into the OBS controller main. Inside here, we're going to be needing to edit roboflow.js. Open up roboflow.js in Notepad or an IDE like Visual Studio Code. Here we'll need to edit the publishable API key, the model ID, and version number. If we've done all of the previous steps, we should have the model ID, version number, and publishable key. Enter them here now and click Save. Now that we've configured the RoboFlow.js auth variables, we can head over to OBS Studio and set up the scenes and sources. The scenes we need to set up is Webcam Scene and Webcam Scene 2. To make a scene, you can right click in the Scene section and click Add. We need to name it Webcam Scene and click OK. Since I've already made the scene, it's already set here. You can see that I have my DSLR webcam set up, but what we're going to be doing is configuring another section, another source called Lenny. So we just added an image source, and now we need to add Lenny. Let's go into the OBS controller main and get the Lenny PNG, which is inside the repo folder. Now we have a Lenny on the screen. Let's set that off to the side for later. The next scene we need to set up is Webcam Scene 2. Right click the Scene section and call it Webcam Scene 2. Here we'll be adding another video source. Go to Video Capture and call it Webcam 2. Here I'll be using my front HD camera. I'll be setting this to fit screen, and that's good enough. After setting up webcam scene and webcam scene 2, with Lenny in the sources, you should have everything that you need set up in the scenes and sources section of OBS. The last thing we need to do is get the WebSocket settings from OBS. You can do that by going up to the Tools section and clicking OBS WebSocket Settings, and then enabling WebSocket Server. Click Show Connection Info. Here you can copy down your server IP, server port number, as well as server password. We will need this for a later step. After copying your connection info and setting a server password, click Apply and then click OK. Now we will head back over to RoboFlow.js. 
Inside of RoboFlow.js, we need to configure the WebSocket. To configure the WebSocket, you need to put your IP address in front of the colon and the port number after the colon here. Set the password to whatever password you've set in the OBS WebSocket settings. Mine is currently set to RoboFlow. Once when everything has been configured in the WebSocket, save RoboFlow.js. Now that you've set up your WebSocket, your OBS scenes and sources, as well as your RoboFlow.js auth variables, you can now open up index.html. This will start RoboFlow.js, and it will ask you to use your camera. Click Allow. Now that your web browser has successfully loaded your RoboFlow model, we need to set the camera input to OBS Virtual Camera. In Google Chrome, click Manage, and then click OBS Virtual Camera. Navigate back to OBS and start your virtual camera. This will allow RoboFlow.js to see the scenes and sources inside of OBS, as well as interact with them. Now that the virtual camera is running, RoboFlow.js should be able to control OBS. We can test that with the grab command here, as well as the stop command. You can see that Lenny comes on the screen when I use the grab command, and as well as goes off the screen when I use stop. We should be able to transition scenes by using up and down as well. Cool. If you want to learn more about this project or other projects that we're working on at RoboFlow, head over to roboflow.com and visit our blogs. See you next time.